Over the course of 87 days, um, 4.9 million barrels of oil spewed into the Gulf, plus or minus 10% uh, all ahead. Um, that's an Exxon Valdez every four and a half days. The well, as you know, was plugged on July 15th. Um, the last oil seen on the surface of the water was August 3rd. This oil spill is not over. Um, it, it will be decades, I think, before we really understand the true impacts of the spill on the system. Although the oil has stopped flowing, the work is not. We have preliminary evidence, and we're doing the chemical workups now, that in fact this oil spill event is associated with a dramatic flux of organic matter, dramatic flux of organisms to the bottom, with implications for the food web that'll take years to play out and which we're only now beginning to try to understand. So it's not the adult forms of these organisms, it's the larval, the post-larval, that we have a big uncertainty about. About what's going to happen, not just this year, but following years. We believe there was an impact. Now the question is, how, how pervasive was that impact? Is it something that we might expect to go on in time? And those are, are very important questions that we're working on now. Are there sublethal effects not yet detected? We went to a lot of beautiful places where they appear to be doing fine. However, that's just a quick look. We don't know whether their food source has been knocked out. We don't know whether their reproductive potential has been impaired. Luckily, amazingly, actually, oil only affected the marsh shorelines, not the interior of the marshes. We really did work to be very transparent, to put the information as we knew it to be true out as accurately and quickly as possible. The dilemma that we faced was how could we offer what we knew with sufficient confidence that it would withstand the scrutiny that it needed to. Those of us in the academic community who were working in the Gulf, finding things and wanting to share our results, felt that there was resistance to our data, to our interpretations. I don't understand why there was this tremendous pushback to sort of rein it in and tone it down, and, and I don't think any of us really toned it up. Um, we just reported what we saw. So we really had to take a look at all of our stakeholders and all of the people who were affected and all of the people that had a voice and all of the people that needed information and try to meld that into some way of communicating all of it. People want information and they're not stupid. They, they want information, they're capable of processing it, and I think it's our obligation to, to put it out there for them. The people are the issue and what goes out to the rest of the world is only of minor importance to me. The people in the Gulf Coast are the ones that are affected here. What we do, what we say, how we say it, and how we communicate it have huge impacts. The news of media, in many instances, sensationalize uh, reports. It was very disheartening to first learn that we were under siege by all the newspaper. There's a cost to this image being out there four months in a row from a national consumption standpoint. And we often hear you know, perception trumps reality. Well, in this case, I think it's true. It's not the actual risk that matters from an economic standpoint as much as the perceived risk. In defense of the local reporters in the Gulf who were writing those stories, um, I, would, I would guess that they were not uh, so much trying to feed public fears as responding to public fears. This happened to us worst time of year on the eve of our high seasons to the end of it like a storm typically would do. Uh, it also happened at the end of a two-year down cycle in the economy, which we were not immune from. So our businesses did not have the ready reserves that typically they would have available to them. As far as impacts on, on humans exposed to the oil, the workers and the fishermen, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not been documented like a lot of the other science as well as it needs to be, so therefore anecdotal information is used. I've only heard anecdotally that uh, the dispersant appears to be very long-lived, doesn't appear to be degrading, that is that um, the person at Woods Hole that's doing these analyses is finding a very clear dispersant signature in these deeper layers we were on sampling. The primary responsibilities of the government have to be protecting human life uh, and then also trying to understand um, as, we, as we try to pick up the oil um, what the damages may in fact be to not only natural resources but also the human use of those natural resources. It is astonishing to me that we're sitting here after the spill and there has been no new legislation. I mean, stuff passed in the House and then died in the Senate as, as it always does. My great fear is that a $4 gallon of gasoline 
that um, it's going to be back to drill, baby, drill, and that we're going to lose focus on, you know, what was important and what we need to change. You know, there was great damage to the human side of this. There was considerable damage to the environmental side of this. And my number one concern is that great damage that was done to the human side of the equation is going to be forgotten in the long term. If we don't learn the, the lesson that inherent risks have two parts to them, and you have to balance the investments in risk aversion to the consequences. There are so many critical environmental issues facing us. Climate change, just as one example. Um, and, and here we have gained the public trust. Um, I think it, it, it rests upon us to, to take that and run with it.